Hey guys, I'm Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Today is gonna to be the first Dr. Sugai Reacts video, and we're gonna start a new series. We're gonna to react to celebrity skincare routines and such. And the most recent one last week, Gwyneth Paltrow released her skincare regimen with Vogue, and it was her morning regimen. Things like candles, eggs, and such. She's even talked about um, going on a keto diet and doing fasting while having COVID-19 uh, early on in the pandemic. And officials have had to call her out saying, you're giving advice or recommendations that is not backed by any science. Okay, so let's jump into it. Hi, I really liked I'm her Gwyneth in Shakespeare Paltrow, in Love and, I'm and back for my in Shallow How, hilarious Beauty movie. Secrets. I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of my daily routine and all of the products that I love and you can see how it has evolved. The first thing that I do in the morning, well after I brush my teeth, is make my morning smoothie. This one has Nothing wrong with having a smoothie to start your day. And butter, my beauty routine, which is really part of my wellness routine. Okay, here we go. I believe that beauty and wellness are inextricably linked, is the dry brush. You just wanna have a dry brush that has a little bit of um, resistance to it that's not too soft. And basically what you do is you start at your toes and you gently brush your skin all the way up the body. So, and always towards the heart. So I'm doing it on my arms now and you can do it towards the heart this way and upwards on the stomach. And it really helps with circulation and exfoliation among other benefits. One of the most critical parts of my morning- Let's stop right there. So dry brushing. Dry brushing is a practice you can use to do light exfoliation of the skin to remove dead skin cells sitting there. For me, as I've always talked about, I don't like physical exfoliation. I like chemical exfoliation with things like salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acids. Those are better for gently exfoliating dead skin. When you have a physical exfoliating brush, it's hard to gauge and sometimes you can overdo it and really break and compromise the skin barrier. If you have eczema, psoriasis, either one of those conditions, I would avoid dry brushing uh, or any physical exfoliation because for eczema, it can already break further a compromised skin barrier break the skin further, expose nerves, and cause further itching. If you have psoriasis, you have this thing called the Kebner effect or the Kebner phenomenon. And that if you scratch or traumatize the area, it can make the psoriasis spread. So your plaque could become significantly bigger. So be very careful if you have those skin conditions. If you have dry skin in general, a sensitive skin, I would even avoid this too, because this is just gonna cause more badness actually. It does help though, they think with blood circulation, lymphatic drainage, sure, fine. It can help with um, blood circulation, potentially, you know, she's talking about moving it towards the heart, but there's no evidence or science behind that it can help with cellulite or stretch marks or spider veins, those types of things I'd say you won't find those benefits with dry brushing. So let's keep going. One of the most critical parts of my most morning routine part here. for me anyway is my sunscreen, meditation sunscreen, practice. Sunscreen. So I do something called trans oh, meditation. Okay, yeah. Skin and mental health and the mind are very much interconnected. So definitely want to focus on mental health. De-stressing is huge for healthy skin. I really find that creating a practice or a ritual out of something makes it so that you're definitely investing in yourself. The best thing you can do is invest in yourself. My morning routine is super important to me. I can't live without it. It is our Goop Glow Microderm Instant Glow Exfoliator. I'm a massive exfoliating junkie. It just gives you this incredible smooth finish. Look. Okay, here she's doing another exfoliator. This is a chemical exfoliator with alpha hydroxy acids and it's over a hundred bucks. It's uh, pretty expensive. I mean, it's very expensive, but if you're going with Paltrow and you have the money to buy it, you know, go for it. You know, realistically, will I, would, will, will I be using this? No. Or would the um, general public be using something like this? No. And I think exfoliation shouldn't be part of your daily regimen. It should just be like a once every other week type of thing that I use an exfoliator, maybe, maybe even once a month at times. Um, so this is a part of a daily routine, typically an exfoliator. Okay. So now I am going to apply Vintner's Daughter. This is an unbelievable serum. I love the way it smells. And you just put a couple drops on. 
It's incredible to know that there are clean, non-toxic products that are really efficacious and really work wonders on your skin. Okay, so she goes into talking about non-toxic products. So toxic versus non-toxic. You know, I really kind of cringe when I hear the word toxic nowadays or clean. Of course, you want what's best for our skin, but I think skincare ingredients are not black and white. You can't just say one's evil and one's good. You know, good versus evil, clean or non-clean or toxic. The water is considered dangerous if you drink too much of it and that can cause hyponatremia and can kill you. So too much of a good thing can be bad. So to say that this is clean or not, I don't think that's fair. This is a very expensive serum too, over a hundred dollars. It's full of natural ingredients that, um, you know, are antioxidants supposedly. So, you know, totally fine if she wants to use a serum that works for her, right? So it's all about your skin goals if you want an antioxidant to protect yourself in the morning before a moisturizer and sunscreen an antioxidant like this would be fine but it is pricey i'm not going to bash her for having expensive skincare of course right and vintner's daughter i just looked at the price pretty high price point there next so this i don't do this every day this is like special occasion say you're doing okay so not part of a her photo daily shoot routine. or you have a really important zoom or maybe you had a bit of a rough night this up. so these um jillian dempsey she's a fantastic jillian makeup dempsey. artist and she has these hydrating ipads you open up this nifty these masks little are 75 dollars for 10 i believe packet, which is i'm not it's strong hydrating. enough to open okay i got it help with puffiness Sometimes I walk around the house with these on. The skin of the eyelids is the thinnest skin on the body. So you definitely kind want to take care of that. So again, and doing email or whatever, I get the Jillian Dempsey also from her, this um, sculpting gold bar thingy. And you turn it on, it vibrates. Don't get any ideas. Oh. No comment on that part. I was not a person who ever had a skincare routine as a teenager. My daughter does, but I was very much a tomboy. So this whole skincare thing has come to me later in life. People always Same ask for me, me too. I started a skincare routine later on. Good to hear that her daughter is starting at a younger age. Um, just talking about the Jillian Dempsey gold sculpting bar or any sculpting bar out there. You know that it could help relax facial muscles. It could help with lymphatic draining or blood flow away from the uh, the bags under the eyes. So if you have trouble with puffiness or bags under the eyes, you could gently massage away outwards laterally to the sides of the face to help with drainage in, in the morning. I, of course, don't have time to do this in the morning. You could instead keep your head elevated while you sleep to help with blood flow and drainage away from the eye, the fragile, sensitive skin around the eyes. The gold bar probably is all it's good for is that. Or if you're an injector like myself, a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, you could use the vibrations of this gold sculpting bar to distract the patient. It helps with injection related pain. Um, but in terms of the uh, other benefits that they might promise, like sculpting the face or even helping with collagen production, there's no science behind that. In terms of the uh, delivery of medications or topicals, can it help improve uh, the penetration of those things? No, I'd say your hands, your fingers gently massaging your serums or creams is just as good as a gold sculpting bar. Also, people are getting allergies to gold, so I'd be very careful if you have a gold or nickel allergy um, because you could also get a reaction to one of these bars as well, rubbing that across your face, especially the sensitive areas around your eyes. That's my take on it. If you like to do it because it feels nice, I won't judge you, totally go for it, okay? But I don't think it's gonna replace Botox or fillers in terms of sculpting your face or if you wanna do radio frequency devices, those are more likely to sculpt your face um, more so than this $195 gold sculpting bar. They do sell cheaper options of this. I bought um, one to trial on Amazon with my own money. It was like $10 and I hear when I was reading their views, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, if I want something that's a clean, non-toxic product that really works. Again, the clean, non-toxic, oh. That I want to buy at the drugstore, what should I get? And I always say, Waleda Skin Food. They make this super rich, fantastic mo moisturizer. 
Okay, I think so my correct. You, after a serum and having the little hydrating eye mask, you want to put a moisturizer over it to seal it all in. That's correct. So, you, you know, Waleda, I've tried. I bought that on Amazon with my own money, and it's about $20 typically. Um, the cream is nice and thick. It's very thick. I think it's a little too thick for my face, but some people with very dry skin might find it nice. Um, you know, for your hands, your your elbows, your knees, that might be a nice, or even cr dry cracked heels, that might be a nice thing to do. For me, I just don't like the scent of it. The fragrance is quite strong, so that was a little off-putting for me. My wife didn't mind it as much. So it's all, again, personal opinions. I think as a moisturizer, it probably is effective, and she likes it that because it has you know, natural organic ingredients, which again, natural things aren't always the best thing for you. Poison ivy, poison oak are organic and can cause a rip roaring allergic contact dermatitis. And I've seen people in the hospital when they get in contact with those plants and they just blow up. These ingredients, te technically any ingredient uh, that's organic could do the same as well. So be careful and this is just not something that works for everyone, right? May work for Gwyneth Paltrow, but what works for her may not work for you and you can definitely still get a reaction to these things too. And that goes the same for me. Whenever I recommend a product with fragrance, say, it may not be something that you like if you have a known fragrance sensitivity. I have the box here, Waleda here. It's uh, no synthetic fragrances, but it does have quite a bit of strong fragrances. Extracts from rosemary, chamomile, pansy. They have the sweet almond oil, which sweet almond oil is in uh, Cetaphil, which is great and moisturizing. It has the sunflower seed oil, which is also in Cetaphil, which is nice and moisturizing. It also beeswax. I'm seeing people getting allergic to beeswax as well. So those are just some things I wanted to highlight. Let's see how it looks as a hand moisturizer, say. Really thick. Almost has a sticky residue, like you're putting on an ointment, but it's a, definitely a cream. Yeah, I'd probably stick with this maybe more for, ah, oh, it's actually blending in pretty nicely. So as a hand cream, this might work really well if you don't mind the, the scent. So the scent for me is a little bit too powerful. So maybe elbows and, and ankles and feet for me, I could use this after a shower to lock in that moisture. Mom, you know, we both tend to have dry skin. We have similar- so she, Now she's mentioned she has dry skin. So if you have dry skin, I wouldn't be going crazy with those exfoliators. Um, exfoliating with a dry brush and then exfoliating with a chemical exfoliant. Definitely would be careful if you have dry skin. Her skin and, but she's very low maintenance. Like she's probably even more low maintenance than I used to be now, I'm a little bit higher maintenance. Um, but I think what I learned from her most is just to be comfortable with yourself. Just be comfortable in your skin. Um, and you know, that she was kind of a less is more in yeah, terms. I think less is more is totally fine. You know, in terms of skincare products, um, use the appropriate amount, of course, for your products. If you're going to use it, use the appropriate amount. But yeah, you don't have to go crazy with your skincare routine and have to do all of these cosmetic things as well and get all the crazy devices and different face masks or exfoliators. Definitely just stick with the foundation and that's respectable. So course. next is sunscreen. This is a clean mineral sunscreen brand called Unsun. Clean, she, again, she uses the word clean. And it's a 30 SPF. Not you know, there are a lot of really yeah. harsh chemicals in conventional sunscreen. So that's a product that I really want to avoid. So harsh chemicals. So conventional sunscreen, um, she's kind of giving it uh, her stamp of disapproval. She's saying that most conventional chemical sunscreens are bad or harsh. They have, um, I guess she's insinuating that it's not clean. I'd have to argue that, you know, chemical sunscreens, what we know, there's no evidence, science evidence that is bad for you. For coral reefs though, I have to say, you know, there are in the lab settings, there's evidence that it could bleach coral reefs. And so Hawaii, my home state of Hawaii, has banned the sales of sunscreens with these ingredients like oxybenzone or octanoxate. But to say that all chemical sunscreens are harsh and dangerous, there are great UV filters in the, you know, in the other parts of the world that we don't have access to that we know are still safe. So to say again that all chemical sunscreens are evil, I don't agree with that either. Unsun, I've not heard of that brand, um, but you know, mineral sunscreens I do like because if you are worried about being sensitive to chemical UV filters, yes, mineral ingredients are less likely to cause a reaction in the sun. When the sun hits certain things like avobenzone, oxybenzone, yes, it can break up and cause irritation. We do know that chemical sunscreens can go systemic and go into the bloodstream with little uh, application. From what we know though, it's still safe to use. And I use a chemical sunscreen at times.
um, that you know isn't certified by the EWG, and which is a great website by the way. If you ever want to understand how clean a, a, a product is, you can go check that out on their website, Skin Deep. Um, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a sort of head to toe slather of sunscreen, but I like to Why put not? some kind of on my nose and the area where the sun really hits. This is okay, so you're not a head to toe slatherer, fine, but please put more sunscreen than that. That was just a lame amount of sunscreen. You dabbed it on like it was an eye serum, just dabbing it on your face. That is just not enough and you're only gonna apply it to where the sun hits. The sun's hitting your whole face, so you gotta apply it to your whole face. You gotta apply it to your neck, you gotta apply it to your ears. So as a dermatologist, I'm diagnosing skin cancers all the time, and I live in Seattle, and Seattle has a reputation for being dark and cloudy. We still see a lot of skin cancers. Places you see, nose, upper forehead, ears, the neck. So you have to wear enough sunscreen to protect yourself. If it says SPF 30, to get an SPF 30, you have to apply enough, a half teaspoon amount, that's enough to cover your face, your ears, and your neck and that comes out to about two to three finger lengths of sunscreen to apply on your face. So definitely that wasn't enough. That was just barely enough. That The amount she put on probably went from, say it was an SPF 30, it's probably an SPF five she put on her face. So you have to put way more uh, sunscreen than that. Um, do not spot treat your sunscreen. You apply it to the entire field and not just guess where the sun's hitting. UV light is hitting us, whether it's UVA, UVB, or visible light from the sun is gonna be hitting us at all times all over our face when you're outdoors or by window glass. So even if you're by window glass or in the car, you should still consider sunscreen to protect yourself from UV radiation that causes DNA damage that can lead to skin cancers, specifically malignant melanoma we don't want you to ever get because that's a very serious fatal skin cancer. The more common ones, basal cell carcinoma is the most common skin cancer. Those we see all the time and those typically aren't as aggressive as melanoma. But still, I say it's a cavity of the skin. Who wants a tumor growing on their face that can cause a hole there? The other one is squamous cell carcinoma, very commonly seen from you know, uh, sunburns and cumulative sun damage. We don't want any of those things to arise, so you definitely wanna cover up with sunscreen and even a hat, ideally, too to cover up, okay? But a hat or um, a hat or an umbrella will not replace sunscreen because sunlight will bounce off the water, sand, uh, snow, or concrete. Those things can still reflect UV light and hit you from below. So you wanna wear sunscreen despite wearing a hat. So at the end, I'll be showing you how much sunscreen you should be putting on. When it comes to sunscreen, less is not more. Less is actually dangerous. You can actually really put yourself at risk for um, getting those bad UV burns. Also, besides skin cancer, you're at risk for getting more photo-aged skin. The manifestations of sun damage can be brown spots, white spots, red spots, or we call poikiloderma. For those of you who have it, I don't want you feeling bad that you have it, but who wants to have that worsen, right? I want us to embrace our wrinkles, but who wants to accelerate aging more than we need to? To age is a blessing. I tell my patients that. For us to get older, I'm so grateful to get older, okay? I'm proud of my wrinkles I picked up from my grueling tra medical training, residency, medical school, having kids, but I wanna slow things down as much as possible too. So, you know, there are things like retinoids, vitamin C serums we talk about on this channel, but you know, who wants to accelerate and just get beat up? You know, we don't wanna be the sun's punching bag. And so I would say use the appropriate amount of sunscreen and don't be a less is more type of person when it comes to sunscreen. So. Uh, SPF 30 and above, reapply every two hours. If you're gonna get wet uh, in the pool, if you're gonna get sweaty from exercise, you might wanna consider a water-resistant sunscreen and reapply every hour. Kids six months and up, we recommend sunscreen, okay? If you're younger than six months, sun protection. Staying out of the sun, stay in the shade, sun protective clothing. All right, so a lot about sunscreen. Let's go put some on. Okay, so here I have Dermatology's Tinted Moisturizing SPF 46. I've, did a, I've done a YouTube video on this and I bought this with my own money. This has zinc oxide, which as we said, is a mineral ingredient and it has octanoxate, which has been banned by Hawaii for, to be sold in Hawaii, but visitors can bring their uh, sunscreens into the state. But I would discourage just for out of respect for the aina or the land to not use this when you're gonna be going into the water just in case. 
um, it do actually does damage coral reefs. So just out of respect, don't do that. Plus this isn't water resistant either. So you shouldn't be jumping in the water with something like this. Go for something like there's La Roche Posay Anthelios 50, which is water resistant. There's Coat sunscreen, which we talked about on this channel. Those are better options. And the other one I want to talk about soon is MD Solar Sciences. They have great water resistant sunscreens as well. So here we go. We have a pump here. We're going to apply this one finger length. Am I running low on this guy? Two finger lengths here. Split them up. Get on your ears, your neck. Some moisturizing. I have a promo code down below. You can go to the website, get a discount. But this is a good sunscreen, good everyday sunscreen when you're gonna go out, take a walk, not get too sweaty. I wear this before going to the office. I guess I wear sunscreen during the winter time, early spring where it's not too sunny. I'm still wearing sunscreen on a daily basis. And if I'm gonna go to the beach, yes, I'm gonna be a head to toe slatherer I hope Gwyneth will do that too. I'm glad that she's still a promoter and supporter of sunscreen. And she hasn't denied that, that sunscreen can help you. But just got to put enough on Gwyneth, okay? I just have to say that we've um, all jumped on JLo for talking about olive oil. We've, we're now giving Gwyneth Paltrow a hard time. But really, it's just our way of trying to be creative and talking about how much sunscreen we should be doing. Repetition is key, especially since we have a lot of young uh, people on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram watching us. We want to, this is the time to protect yourselves. You know, they say in the studies, less than 18 years, if you're getting those severe burns, blistering sunburns, those really can increase your risk of melanoma significantly, right? So if you're, those are the things I wish I knew before. As an 18 year old uh, or even a teenager in high school, I wish I wore sunscreen every day. I was a golfer. I was outside playing golf all the time. I wish I wore sunscreen every round I played. I always think back like, gosh, I would get so tanned and I thought it looked nice then and I am cringing when I look back at those pictures of me uh, with the tan skin and I'm paying the price now and hopefully I can slow down the, the, the wrinkling process, the brown spots with these ingredients that I talk about on this channel. But you know, those, those are the things, if you're out there watching, start early with your sunscreen, okay? In terms of uh, Gwyneth Paltrow in general, um, you know, I'm not going to label you as toxic or non-toxic. I mean, I appreciate you putting up the Stop Asian Hate on uh, Instagram. You know, that's huge. That means a lot having celebrities stand up for um, fellow Asians. Uh, you're still promoting sunscreen use, so that's good. I know Goop released a statement later on after all of the criticism around the video. They did say that because of filming uh, timing they took out the parts of her putting the sunscreen on her entire face and not just dabbing around her eyes and such so that's what they had said and although she did admit that she's not a head-to-toe type of slather with sunscreen I think if you're gonna be outside definitely wear sunscreen on your body as well not just your face and your neck you got to protect everything because I find skin cancers on the feet on the shins all the time. So we have to be protecting the lower extremities as well. I hope this video was helpful, guys. Let me know if you want me to react to any other celebrity skincare uh, in the near future. Please like the video, please share with your friends, and also please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button, guys. Peace.